Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Town of Halifax Board of Selectmen. This is our meeting uh, in line with our uh, policy during this COVID era to have extraordinary meetings. Today is, what is today? Today is Thursday, November 19th. And as is usual, we're going to start with an update uh, on any COVID-related issues. And we'd like to put our health agent on the spot every time first, so take it away, Bob. Hello. Uh, we had four cases um, since our last meeting on Monday. Uh, now hospitalized. And then um, really, um, going into Thanksgiving, it's one of the biggest shopping days of the year. So um, I just put the emphasis out to the, um, the townspeople. To, it's a, a time to really, um, you know, think about the social distancing, whether it be customer to customer, customer to employee. Um, the source may have a very, very heavy impact. And once you get that many people together in the same place, um, I just want everybody to proceed with caution. Uh, we're, I, <clears throat> I, I noticed that the stores have gotten a little more lax about counting heads as they're walking in the doors and stuff. Uh, is, are we still in pretty good line with that? Or? Well, right now, they've opened up um, you know, the new guidance is to allow the people in. But I spoke with uh, Martin over at Walmart and um, Scott over at the Shop and Shop. And um, they're going to monitor it if they think that things are getting heavier than what they can actually handle. They're going to just stop the lines up the store again. So um, then they have to wait outside if they're not controlling it. Anyway. Yeah, this is, the, this is going to be the telling season where people are out doing their shopping, although I think a lot of it's going to end up being uh, online. Um, but we'll see. Hopefully, people are responsible and... Well, I'll certainly be in the stores myself, so... Shopping or investigating? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm going to have an easy bake oven. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I know Walmart's had uh, their big Black Friday sales the last two weekends. In, in, you know, they were preparing to minimize the, you know, the input on, on, on Black Friday, so... Trying to spread it out. They've been hiring two guys, four, uh, yeah, two, two officers from 5 a.m. until 3 p.m. Um, last two Saturdays. So I don't know how busy they've been. We had private security down in Walmart. Yeah, this is one, yeah, this is one. Cool. Should we reach out to them and ask them about the plans for next? Well, I think Bob's kind of handled that, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they're hiring for detail officers. For that day. For that day. Okay. Chief Averis, anything? No, no, just to do the employee testing and plan on the product. We'll have all the tests here by next week, so we might be able to actually start later next week. One slight change after working on that director is he doesn't want us to use the anti body test. He wants us to use the antigen test, which will be a lower level nasal swab, still 15 minute read time. And his, his um, rationale for that is if someone has antibodies, it doesn't give us any true information where the antigen, I think Bob actually said this, the antigen test will give us useful information that if the person tests positive, they'll be, they're considered contagious and, um, for the virus. So. Um, we'll be able to do that widespread. The tests were a little bit more expensive, but not dramatically. Uh, and the PCR, we'll also have a supply of 350 PCR tests available to us with um, FedEx labels. We ship them off and we'll get the results in 24 to 36 hours. So AccuLabs is working with us on that. Um, if we have any sick employees, we can test them or, you know, the PCR tests are the gold standard. We were able to get that rate down. We, you know, generally they're running around 140 bucks. We're able to. We're working with AccuLabs. We can get it for 75 dollars each. So we'll be able to do some pretty, you know, widespread testing with those as well. And on the um, everything's a go for the fifth and sixth um, for the community testing event. Once, hopefully by next week, I'll have some um, information that we can use to distribute, telling people, you know. 
between the health insurance, you know, have the health insurance card available if they don't have the health insurance card, social security number or anything so we can bill for the, so they can actually bill for the testing, um, no cost, um, if you have, you, no cost no matter what, um, whether you have health insurance or not. But um, that's pretty much all I have. Chief well, Shots? We have a letter. Mention, I'll just mention that letter. I did receive a letter from um, the mobile home park uh, looking for some guidance on whether or not they were able to reopen um, their, 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 their scene. I don't know. I don't know. But that, I don't know. I don't know. Talk. Um, you know, talking about sheltering needs, I mean, it's that is not actually a shelter. It's just, you know, not a designated shelter. They do kind of congregate there during storms. So Bob was going to reach out and see what he could find for guidance from the state in regards to that. And um, I just told him we get you know get back to him in a week or so, in a couple of days. Nothing. I have nothing. Nothing. So a few things came in the mail. Bob had forwarded me this note that various local boards of health are sending to Governor Baker and the legislative leaders about. Um, supplemental funding for the local boards of health with their COVID activities. They're looking for $15 million, which is, you know, when you think about the state, that's what, two and a half dollars a person, let's say. So um, it's not a lot of money, but it can go a long way in a lot of communities um, to help staff in whatever community it is perform the functions related to COVID. Um, I'm happy to send a letter out on the board's letterhead if the board wants to uh, follow up with a letter of support for this measure. I'm um, sure. Uh, Move it. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Well, just to confirm, and the fire chief had asked me because we talked about this last week that we should be buying thermometers. That, um, for those buildings that don't already have them, I would say at least two here in the town hall if we're going to be doing temperature checks. But I guess that's really where I wanted to go back to is um, if we're buying thermometers, the basis for doing so is that we'd be doing temperature checks somehow logistically, I guess every day as people come into work. And I didn't know whether that, in fact, is still the plan that the board would like to follow. Um, we've, we, I've been talking with Caesar about doing the login also, and he thinks he can get something set up for that. So, but that's a different avenue of handling it. So I think we were talking about per department. You're well, just with all the departments, I mean, we're talking, there's $60, I think, each. So if we're talking, let's say, 10 departments, it's $600. I don't, I'm not sure if that's overkill. But it's like, you know, it's a, you know, one way or the other, we'll fund it, you know, either we'll get COVID CARES money or we won't. If we don't, we'll have to, eventually it will come out of the free cash. It just doesn't, I don't know, to me, at first glance, it doesn't seem as practical to have two to share around the buildings. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. Good. I'm okay with the expense if we think it's valuable because there's, the, the data seems to be conflicting with the right. so, so, um, Whether the temperature is really Yeah, it's one out of, you know, a multitude of symptoms. Uh, it's, not, it's not a guarantee, but it won't hurt. Um, it's at least something we can do. Right. With, that's minimally invasive and you know, quick, mm -hmm. but not necessarily telling. It might tell you that you've, you're sick, <laughs> but it may not necessarily be COVID. What's the turnaround time, Charlie? I'm sorry? Turnaround time, if we okay to? Pretty quick. I mean, I think they're, I think they're not as uh, difficult to get as they were. Because I know supplies and a lot of things are... Yeah, okay. you know, I, 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 I think it would be within a week. Okay. Well, then the... Sandy? Can I ask, what's the intent that would be the fire to record the temperature every day? Or... I think the discussion uh, revolved around uh, having everybody do a quick temperature check in the morning as they reported for work, unless I'm mistaken. I think that's what we were talking about. Right? And then some type of uh, 
Well, we do it on an iPad. We you know, put our name and then we check off that we don't have any of those symptoms. And then we have like a little box okay to work. We, we would keep a log of it that way. Child worker with Caesar on trying to set it up where employees log into their computer in the morning. But they have like the pre screen checklist. Confirm. You know. in, you're just acknowledging that you don't have any. It's more of a, just a reminder oh, that mind that make people think about. Now, would the associate test themselves or be someone responsible for the test? Well, I think it's going to be, to some extent, everybody testing themselves because people come in at different times. So, for instance, Pam and Irma come in earlier than I do normally. Um, I don't know, you know, I, one of them's not going to test the other, I would expect. I think they can, they can test. Well, when we did it in last year, at the beginning of it, yeah. um, everybody had to come to one health yeah, that, that, that was high up from yeah, yeah, that doesn't call it. Yeah. It's 9.30, right? Yeah. Everybody just came in and said. Well, so I think, I think each department will handle its own. Good. One way or the other. I, I think that makes the most sense. I know in the neighboring town, they have a fire department personnel at the, at the door checking everybody's temperature, but that really kind of chews up resources, and I don't think it's necessary. Okay. So, Chief, can you... Are there any other buildings that need it besides Town Hall? Does everybody else have a thermometer? Does, does Pope's Tavern? I've, I've brought a few over to Pope's Tavern. Okay. Because they use them for the bus. They use them like yeah. right for the okay. people getting on the bus. So while we get 10, we may have, end up with a couple extra, but I'd rather have those in stock. Okay. Um, we talked to Bob. We talked about the mask order from the state about public facilities and public buildings, we're all, even though we're not at 11 um, right now, we're wearing masks. Basically the guidance that the government has given and then a couple of page went back with them and tried to make sure is that unless you're in a closed building, not open to the public, or unless you're in an office that's closed, not open to the public, you're supposed to be wearing a mask at all times. Even if you're not dealing with a fellow resident, even if you're more than six feet away from another employee, you're supposed to be wearing masks. We've not pushed this yet, but given the order for, you know, the, and how it's being interpreted, I, you know, as much as I think we may get a bit of pushback from employees about this, um, I'd rather deal with the employees and the pushback from them than dealing with residents or whoever else who calls up, calls Bob, calls me and says, hey, I saw so-and-so in the so-and-so office. They weren't wearing a mask. What are you going to do about it? Right. I'd rather deal with it internally than dealing with it externally. And so I mean, tomorrow's Friday. Most of us aren't here, for instance. but. Probably I'm going to have to go around starting Monday to talk to people about this. And I want the board to know that that's going to happen. Have you, um, or have we rather, um, again reiterated this to everybody? Well, that's why I'm having this conversation with you right now about the mask wearing. The information on the positive employee scenario, which I've given you the updated having worked with Linda and Bob and everybody else, to try and make sure it's, uh, at least it deals with the case of when, if and when we have an employee who's positive, what do other employees do? What does that employee do? Um, we already had, we've dealt with some situations where employees have symptoms, but are not positive. And we already had that on the books. We just need to go back and look at it and say follow through on that basis. Um, but what I need to do is on Monday, get back to everybody to talk about masks and that you know, this is what, where things are right now. This is a rule we need to follow. But also, here's the information about how to deal with um, a positive employee situation. If you've got questions, please ask me, ask Bob, and we'll try and get the you know, answers one way or the other. But um, I think we're going to have to get that, despite, as I said, the pushback we might get from people about some of this, we're obligated at this point to follow through. Um, you know, if the board tells me something different, that's fine. But um, so, 
So even if you're in an office that's not accessible to the public, you're saying you still need to work out? No, so that's, the, that's where I'm tired. So if the building's closed, let's say, I mean, for instance, during the election season, um, Barbara Gator was in the building by herself at various times. Doesn't have to wear a mask under those circumstances. The building's not open to the public right there. Let's say that someone's office is closed. You know, there are no doors open, there are no, you know, you're closed. I would say you're not wearing a mask. But the minute you're in a space that's open to the public or can be seen by the public, in fact, you know, let's talk, the air's going in and out, then we're talking wear a mask time. Even if you're not dealing with a resident or someone else coming visiting town hall, even if you're six feet away from somebody else, you're wearing a mask. Now, if for some reason you were in a closed office and you were had another person there, then we do the six foot rule anyway. But most, you know, there are very few offices. So, for instance, let's say you're doing a Zoom meeting, you close the door, there's nobody else in the room. Fine, the mask can be off. But it, other, most of the offices are open to some extent, one way or the other, to the public. Even if the public can't walk in. The windows window, are open, for yeah. instance, in the three offices. I'm just think like J Jason's office at the fire station. Yeah. That's, so if he closes the door, he doesn't have to wear the mask. So right. we, I, I will tell you at the fire station, we had started off strong. We got a little COVID fatigue in the middle, but for the past three weeks, everyone's wearing a mask, like all the time. Because if my understanding, it, it didn't really give that, um, it didn't say anywhere. Like, so if you have multiple employees, even if the station was closed to the public, it didn't allow for not wearing masks. Okay. So, yeah, well, so, um, but I guess even if you're in an office and it's closed, if you got somebody else in there wearing the mask, that, I mean, yeah, that's fine. No, I, I, you know, I don't think anyone likes it. Oh no, I can guarantee you, they don't. I don't, I don't like it either. But it is what it is. Yeah. So, unless I hear from the board otherwise, we're going to proceed and bring everybody up to speed on this. Um, in relation to the testing and everything, um, there's additional guidance now from um, the state that we're saying, while the additional, initial guidance to quarantine for 14 days after expo exposure still stands, this additional guidance will allow those who have exposed to COVID to test out of quarantine after 10 days if they meet all the following parameters. They have had, not had and do not have any symptoms of COVID. They are, if they are tested on day eight of their quarantine period or later, using a molecular diagnostic test, a PCR test, they receive a negative test result. And they must monitor themselves for symptoms for the full 14 days. An individual that develops symptoms should contact a local health care provider and be retested. Um, so it's not just simply, it, on both ends, it's simply not just 14 days. They're mentioning, you know, if you've got symptoms after 14 days, you stay home. If you don't, now, if you haven't been tested, Bob, but you get through the 14 days and you don't have symptoms, do you come back to work still then? Okay. Yeah. But you can come back earlier if you... As long as nobody else in your house. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. Right. And we, and we work that out in our protocols also. Um, there is a Zoom meeting for Plymouth County Cares on Monday at 1. Um, Sandy and or I will try and make sure. Um, I was it going to um, we'll so, discuss tonight, too. Yeah. The advisory board meeting cares update. I guess with my school committee hat on, did you get a response from? Uh, I've gotten nothing back from Tom O'Brien. I'll follow up with him tomorrow. We have a bunch of questions still that are okay. going to answer. Because I, I was told that Kingston and Clinton both got the laptops paid for for the elementary schools. So. Okay. Through the CARES Act money. Um, let's see. We got the, that, the masks, and that's what I have. What that's all the COVID stuff I've got. Um, if you want to move on from COVID, we've got abatements. Um, we have one. Bill. 
we have a bill number for this that we can refer to? I didn't see a bill number. Very clear that if a person doesn't want the service, that they have to write in for an abatement. Yes. Because saying that they didn't realize they needed abatement is in the letter that sit with the bill. Yeah, it's on the bill, and it will say either you can abate it or you can pay it. By the person. So So it's the, it's the first paragraph on the, on, the, on the bill statement. Well, I'd have to go look at the bill. It is on one of the panels there. There are three panels of each bill. And there is information on that that says, file for the abatement or pay this bill by October 1st. Now we can find one of the, the, the original bills and provide copies to the board. And the relevance. Yes, that's where I was going to go with this too. I think I'd like to hold off until we get some kind of feedback. I mean, because just bringing up the case that they quoted. Yeah, we don't have all the particulars, and, and if in fact there's something that that could have long-term ramifications, but sure. Okay, so if you want a table until Monday. Yeah. Okay. Could someone move and second that, please? I'll move it to take one to Monday. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those unanimous. Um, for, if the board would vote to affirm having Tom sign that EMPG grant uh, contract back on Monday. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Can we? Uh, Table the second abatement as well. Yeah, I, I'd like to. I'd like to table. The, yeah, I, I think we should. Um, so can we table 12, 10, 19, 62, and, and the one that we were talking about earlier was um, yeah. 12, 57. Can I get a second for that? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. On the toy drive. Um, we know that Steve has been working with Jason and the crew from the uh, toy drive. They're going to still have the driving around portion. What they're going to be asking is that as many people as possible drop their packages off at the highway barn or if necessary at the end of driveways. They're going to have a couple of chase cars following the truck with Santa in it, and Mrs. Claus in it. In case so it sounded like Steve's going to have Santa and Mrs. Claus at the highway barn just kind of waving to cars as they drive through. Right? That's the way it was at. So, so, they, so they're not going to drive around this stuff? And, and it, well, me and Bob talked to him the other day, and then he said that they were going to have like individual Girl Scout families going out and picking up. Right. So, yeah, it says Mr. and Mrs. Claus in sleigh with two or three firefighter elves on a 16 foot trailer. This is w what I have here. But I guess it is at the bar. Yes, you're right. They'll be wait they'll wa be waving people in, and then they drop a drop. You know, you're right. They're not going to go out to the streets. Um, and I guess it just what well, says then. Hopefully, three Girl Scout chase pickup cars following Santa to pick up packages, which tell, says that to me that, that they're driving around on the streets. Yeah, I don't. I didn't, my, my impression from Steve was that, that Santa was going to be at the barn. Okay, let's get a we'll follow up. Okay. Get some clarification. Then. 
Um, I have letters of request from um, Metro South and the Plymouth Chamber of Commerce for letters of support for state grants that they get as regional development organizations. This, we've done this in the past. The only thing I've asked both of them to do is provide some examples of work they've been doing in Halifax, um, specific businesses they've assisted, et cetera. Um, but you know, there's been no harm in us getting the letters of support out unless if the board would so allow me to do so, I'll do so again. We can do both. We can, we can do both. Give them a letter of support and request. Yeah. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, we have the annual contract for the dog shelter at Lakeville. Um, I'm not aware of any problems we've had with them. So in this case, the board could sign two copies. It's the last two pages of the uh, what I think I'm giving you. Um, it's for all the board. And this would be for calendar year 2021. Can I get a movement? So move. Second. All those in favor? All right. Then the board can affirm its votes on Monday or affirm its signatures on Monday. Yeah. Yeah, first. Yeah, second. That covers just a little up. Affirm I'm sorry, its. Sorry, did you say something? No, there we go. Use that sergeant voice. Okay. <laughs> Um, road opening permits for 330 Plymouth Street and for 12 Water Street. The board signed off on these on Monday if the board would affirm um, its actions. So, Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Um, and I'm not, I'm running out of time, so there's nothing urgent in the executive sessions for any of the cases or the negotiations. So. Um, unless the board has something else, or PM has something else, or our crew does. Sandy? So, the mail that we received from Mr. Yes. Tanguini, does the board have any interest in inviting him into a meeting? He emailed me and Tom, I guess, um, but the emails didn't go through. Oh, through because time. Tom's old email address. Yeah. It went. It went to oh, my yeah, Silver Lake account. So I removed you because I was giving my opinion, and I let him know that. Uh, and what I had suggested to him is that all the matters that he's coming up with, which are, for instance, um, whether the snow days could be done as virtual teaching days rather than snow days and such, all are a matter of the school committees, not the board select and the board select and Serena can offer opinion if it wants to, but the jurisdiction decisions are with them. I suggested to him that he actually make an appointment with the Silver Lake School Committee, which he's either going to do for their meeting next month or else, I guess, be in the public participation section to voice his uh, comments on those. Um, so I didn't really see any need, and he didn't specifically ask to meet with the Board of Selectmen, but nevertheless, he had written Gordon both as a school committee member and a Board of Selectmen member, so I thought the best thing was to make sure that the other two of you knew about it. And if you wanted to meet with them, that'd be fine. You can meet with anybody you want, but it's really, in my mind, a school committee matter. I, I think it should be referred to the school committee. I agree with you. I, it, I'm just bringing it up. Yeah. He, he sent it to both of us. No, no, I understand. Just the, the, yeah, I asked. I agree. With I can't see where we could make any really impact on it. If your school committee is going into the position we are. I mean, we could always, at some point, if we thought <clears throat> we wanted to be supportive of that, we could do something in terms of just some kind of a letter to suggest that we were in support. But I, I think uh, it'd be more appropriate for him to deal with the school committee first and see where we get with that. Thank you. Okay, I'm done. Move to the chair. Uh, second. Oh, just before we vote, uh, on Monday's meeting, and we're meeting Tuesday night, Yes. You're meeting Monday at 1.30. You're meeting Monday at 6 with the Finance Committee. If you want to attend the Finance Committee to talk about the budget for fiscal 22, then you have a regular meeting at 6.30 on Tuesday. Okay. I, I won't be able to attend the Finance because I have a uh, regular uh, health tax on my trip. So I just want to bring that up. I won't be there for that. No, just tell them we're broke, please. 
Charlie, you've known me for a long time. At every end. He doesn't mean it. Okay. Was there a vote? Aye. 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 All those in favor? Unanimous. Unanimous.